Hi, I'm Dr. Patty Bart. I'm a traditional naturopath with a background in biotechnology and drug development, kind of a unicorn. Anyway, I'm also the owner of Naturally Unbridled Wellness in Onalaska, Wisconsin. And today I'm going to share with you a case study of a woman that I had an initial consultation with last week and um, just to walk you through how the chain reaction of prescriptions have led to a downward spiral for this client. So I have to start by saying the information presented here is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prescribe for any disease or condition. Please consult your preferred healthcare provider, major media outlet, or elected officials when making wellness choices. Okay. So let me kind of walk you through here. So one of the things that I will often do when I start working with a client, of course, um, we have a long conversation about what their goals, wellness goals and challenges are. And I have them walk me through kind of the timeline of events. Now, this particular client was really good in having this little timeline laid out. And when I went through the case, I was like, hmm, um, this seems to be kind of this whack-a-mole um, method to um, her health care. And so anyway, I'm going to just walk you through the chain of events that kind of happened here. It's, it's super common in this office. I can't tell you how many times I've done a consultation that every single thing that the person has come to me for support with for, um, that person... The, that symptom is actually listed as a side effect of their medication. This happens all the time. Um, I know that it is actually rare for doctors to know what all of the side effects are. And I've even had clients report side effects to their doctor and their doctors go, but yeah, that's very rare. Yeah, but it's documented that it happens and rare doesn't mean unheard of. Um, so it's a problem. So I think you're gonna find this as fascinating as I did. So back in 2014, this client was really super stressed out. She was working two jobs, including a nighttime um, bartending job, super busy, super stressed out, and started getting kind of snappy and had put on some weight. And she went to the doctor and they, she was prescribed Vyvanse. Vyvanse is an amphetamine, which when I was in high school, people who took amphetamine, we called that speed, right? It's a central nervous system stimulant. So here we have this person who's super stressed out, burning the candle at both ends. Um, her body is starting to show the, the effects of this level of stress and being in fight or flight for an excessive period of time and the medical solution for this woman was to put her on a stimulant, a central nervous system stimulant, which doesn't make a ton of sense, right? She's already hyper stimulated. She's already in fight or flight and um, she's already overwhelmed. And just to help her to be able to keep up that pace, um, they put her on a stimulant. So that was 2014. Now, um, cortisol is a stress hormone, and it when you are in fight or flight for an excessive amount of time, your cortisol levels will rise. And um, there is, I found a journal article for her called "Stress Induced Changes in Mood and Cortisol Release Predict Mood Effects of Amphetamines." So she was already super stressed out, so already had adrenal stress and high cortisol levels from that. And then they put her on amphetamine, which causes even higher um, cortisol levels. And there's um, scientific documentation to that. And so then some of the things included, the findings suggest that personality traits of aggression and thrill seeking related to cortisol responses due to amphetamines, raising the possibility that personality may predispose certain individuals, blah, blah, blah. So one of the things that was happening to her, <clears throat> excuse me, is after being on this amphetamine for a period of time, she started getting kind of ragey, kind of snippy. And her husband was like, you know, like, you got to do something about this. You're like, really, <laughs> like angry. 
So she goes back to the doctor in 20, she couldn't remember if it was 2015 or 2016, but she had been on the Vivance um, for one to two years. And then they put her on Lexapro for anxiety. Now, circling back, one of the listed side effects of the first drug, Vivance, is anxiety. So then they put her on anti-anxiety medication, this SSRI drug. Um, known side effects include increased weight, insomnia, irritability, and syndrome of inappropriate di um, antidiuretic hormone symptoms. So definitely affecting the adrenal glands, the pituitary, that sort of thing. So first drug side effect is anxiety. One to two years later, there's a pill for anxiety, okay? So now by 2020, she is on, she's been on the Vivance for um, uh, six years. She's been on amphetamines for six years and um, she goes in for blood work and they find that her cortisol levels, again, the stress hormone in response to being in fight or flight for excessive periods of time, that her cortisol level was off the chart. So one of the things that can cause the cortisol levels to be off the chart is a condition called Cushing's syndrome, which um, people who have horses are typically very familiar with. It's pretty common in horses. I have a horse and a donkey that have Cushing syndrome. And those are, um, Cushing syndrome is typically associated with a tumor, benign tumor on the pituitary or adrenal gland. And then also some small cell lung carcinoma uh, cancer can cause um, Cushing's syndrome as well. Um, so this client, when she was, um, having some of these issues. They found that she had elevated cortisol. They did all of the imaging testing. They did not find any pituitary tumor or adrenal tumor or small cell lung carcinoma, um, but they diagnosed her with Cushing's syndrome at that point, and they put her on a drug called Corlim, which cost $75,000 a month. Okay? Now, one of the side effects of Corlim is endometrial hypertrophy. That means the endometrial lining of the uterus um, expands, right? It gets bigger. And that and vaginal bleeding, low thyroid function, anxiety, and acid reflux are all listed um, as side effects of this Corlim drug. And it also clearly states that this drug is contraindicated for a woman who's having uterine bleeding, vaginal bleeding, which she was having prior to being put on this drug. So she got put on a drug that was contraindicated for her. Um, so also keeping in mind, so vaginal bleeding, hypothyroidism, anxiety and acid reflux are side effects of this drug. Now she's already being treated for anxiety and vaginal bleeding is a contraindication, which she already has. But they put her on the $75,000 a month drug anyway in September of 2020. So by December of 2020, guess what? She has a hysterectomy because the uterine bleeding had gotten so out of control because it was contraindicated to put her on that prescription. But they did that anyway. So all sorts of um, data supporting that you're not supposed to put women on that drug if they have vaginal bleeding um, because of endometrial changes. Um, also, it, it included the information on the, pa the drug page on the um, website for this drug that the Cushing's study contained 50 people, 50, and half of them were control group. So, you know, roughly 25 people, um, they did some clinical trial with 25 people and now they, based on that, they give this drug, um, $75,000 a month drug to people with um, a diagnosis of Cushing's. Now, when they put you on the Coralim, they also put you on the spironolactone, um, which is used for blood pressure. Um, and side effect of that is gastric bleeding ulceration gastritis. So September of 2020, they put her on the drug that has gastric means stomach, so um, bleeding ulcers. So September of 2020, they put her on this drug that has that as a side effect by October of 2021 she had bleeding ulcers 
And so then they put her on protonics. Protonics um, has a side effect of rapid weight gain and she gained 40 pounds when she went on this drug. And then remember that the spironolactone also elevates the thyroid stimulating hormone, so it has a negative impact on thyroid. So then comes another prescription for hypothyroidism. So then she gets put on Synthroid. So th this is um, really just one of many cases where something starts with the first prescription and then the second prescription is a side is to treat the side effects from the first one and then another to um, treat the side effects of the second and she's up to six prescriptions one of which is seventy five thousand dollars a month and she's a mess she's none of these things are making her feel better now she has financial stress emotional stress and this downward spiral. So now she's been on this protonics, right? So protonics is an acid blocker and that's gonna stop the gastric ulcers, but it's also going to stop her ability to be able to absorb nutrients, properly digest her food. So down the road, there'll be more symptoms showing up due to the malabsorption, okay? Chain of events, chain of events. Um, a few days later, I get another client in that um, two of the things that she is um, seeing me for include sweating. She's like sweating all the time. Now she's about my age, so she thinks it's um, menopause issues, um, but she's been sweating like crazy. And um, she also has this weird pustular rash, like different parts of her body, like little papules, like little rash. Um, so I look at her prescriptions and sweating was a side effect of one of her prescriptions. The rash was a side effect of one of her prescriptions. And um, when they put her on the second drug, the second drug is Wellbutrin, which is um, an, another psychotropic drug for hair anxiety. And she said, oh, it's, you know, it's a menopause drug. It is not a menopause drug. Menopause is not a medical condition. It is a time of life of hormonal transition, just like puberty. We do not treat puberty as a medical condition, nor should we treat menopause as a medical condition. We should support the body in making that transition as smooth as possible, but it doesn't need to be treated. It is not a disease. Um, so they put her on a highly addictive, oh, it wasn't Wellbutrin, sorry, it was Effexor. Ugh, that is like, that, that drug just freaks me out. Um, it is super, super addictive and super hard to get off of. So they put her on that for her, her menopause symptoms, but menopause is a temporary state. That drug is so addictive that getting off of it is a nightmare. And so now they put her on a drug that's super hard to get off of for a very, for a very temporary problem. And again, circling back, the sweating that she was having isn't necessarily hot flashes. It's a side effect of one of her medications. And she like sweats all day long. Not like a hot flash that comes and goes, like sweating all day long. Had another kid with an essential tremor, little like tremor in his hand, young guy, like early 20s, super nice kid. And um, they put him on a drug he went to the neurologist, they put him on a drug. The drug was contraindicated for people with liver disease and he had a congenital liver disease. He was born with it, genetic. And so that drug is contraindicated for him, but the um, neurologist is really only interested in the tremor, not the organism, and so puts him on a drug for the tremor, even though it's contraindicated for the liver disease that he was born with. Um, had another client, an elderly woman who came in and she had all these little black spots like all over her skin and she had been to her medical doctor twice for that and you know what they said to her what they say to a lot of elderly is you're just getting old you're you know you're kind of fragile you're bruising easily okay so then I look up her drugs because you can look them up the site I use is called rx for prescription rx list Dot com. And so they put her on this drug. I look up one of her drugs and there's this big black box warning that says, if you experience these black spots on your body to stop the drug immediately and notify your doctor. She's been to the doctor twice for this. They said you're old. Okay. She was bleeding under her skin. Where else was she bleeding in her body? Okay. 
Um, my own father was having some um, back pain, shoulder pain, that sort of thing, and his doctor wanted to put him on meloxicam. Big black box warning that if you have cardiovascular issues, the meloxicam is contraindicated. My dad has high blood pressure. Both his parents had heart attacks, um, but they wanted to put him on meloxicam uh, despite the black box warning. So, you know, be your own advocate. Pay attention to your symptoms. Circle back. When did these symptoms start and what happened prior to that? Now, it's not typically the type of thing where you start a drug and within a day or a week or sometimes even a month, you start to have these side effects. I know that women who start to have side effects from their IUDs is typically a couple years into it that they start really having the problem from their IUDs. Um, so it, it can be the type of thing where you do have a reaction or an effect right away, but it can also be the type of thing that over time these things start to develop. So anytime there's a new symptom, you should um, definitely look up the side effects of any medications that you're on and then also look at the timeline of what happened to my body, what was going into my body before these symptoms started. So obviously we have a lot of situations where people have a new um, presentation of countless different types of symptoms since some um, certain things went into their arms in the past couple of years. Um, and that is definitely something to kind of follow that timeline. But be your own advocate. It's quite often that the doctors have no idea what the comprehensive list of side effects are of the drugs. And one thing that's super important, and I'll just wrap this up, is that um, there's pretty much no medical testing to show what these drugs do in combination. The only time they tend to do combination research is when the patent is running out on a drug and they know that we t they'll typically often prescribe one drug with another drug. Then what they'll do is they'll, um, they'll do some research with those two drugs together and then they'll reformulate it into a combination drug that includes those two drugs together so that they can repatent it and have another 20 years of profit. Um, yeah. So be your own advocate, research the side effects of the medications that you're on and um, question everything, <laughs> okay? Um, peace out, peeps. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can click like or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks.